you know, I discovered objectivism when I was 15, but I wasn't really involved in the movement and um, went through a period where, you know, I considered myself an objectivist, but didn't take it super seriously. And then in 2003, Leonard gave his America versus Americans Ford Hall yep, Forum. Yeah. And I thought, oh, Bush is kind of doing the right thing. He's standing up to the terrorists and so on. And I just remember sitting in that uh, crowd. I was in the front row, right in front of Leonard. And realized, I don't know anything about this philosophy. <laughs> like, I don't get it one one hundredth of what I thought I did. Because you just got this tour de force of this is the complete opposite of what somebody who valued America would do. And Americans tolerating it revealed how we don't value America. And he just laid out this case for how to think about foreign policy and terrorism with just utter clarity and moral confidence that, I mean, changed the trajectory of my life. I went home after that and I said, I'm really going to understand this philosophy now. Like, I'm really going to I get that I don't get it, and that changed everything. Yeah, I mean, I, I was I was there. Uh, I was probably in the front row next to you. <laughs> Didn't know who the hell you were. Yeah, I was, was nobody. I was definitely there at the time. Um, that was, I think, a really really important talk, and some a talk people should uh, go back to and listen to as they uh, as they consider American policy and consider the state of America. I mean, that's such a prophetic talk because he talks about the decline in American sense of life, and if anything, things have only got worse since then, not better. Uh, so it's it's a, it's an it's an amazing talk. But yeah, the first time I met Leonard was in 1987 at uh, TJS, at Thomas Jefferson School. The first time I saw him, Thomas Jefferson School. He gave a, a course on um, what was it? He was writing OPA, so he gave a course on uh, um, I think advanced topics or something like. No, it wasn't advanced topics. It was something about state OPA. of the art. State of the art. Yeah, Jack that's a great State one. of the art. It's a great course. And we got, we got this uh, bounded um, pre-publication, but of course it, it turned out that he added, you know, that, that it was completely different, but we got this pre-publication version of Opa to read. So first, it was an unbelievable treat because you got to read uh, kind of Opa, a pre-publication pre, uh, version of Opa. So it was the first exposure to kind of a systematic, the systematic presentation of the philosophy. And then, I was I was stunned not only by, you know, obviously the lectures were amazing. I'd never taken a Leonard Peacock course before then because I could never afford it. And I was at TGS on a scholarship, so I, I didn't pay for any of it. And it, what was stunning was f how good of a teacher he was. The, the, the depth of the material. Again, I came there, I had read Atlas Shore 10 years earlier. Uh, I hung out with objectivists for seven years. I thought I knew objectivism. And that course, you suddenly realize, I don't know. You know, I, I got what he was saying, but I knew I didn't know this stuff, and I knew I couldn't reproduce any of it. And uh, it was a stunning tour de force, I mean, of, of real philosophical thinking that I'd never encountered ever from anybody in my life. And the material was, was amazing. And he kept saying things like, and unfortunately, a lot of this is lost, but he kept saying things like, and I have like 100, I have 20 pages of notes extending this, and uh, it probably won't make Opa, uh, Opa because I didn't talk about this with Ayn Rand. Just my thoughts on some issue. He's you know, always saying, the next book. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and those notes are gone. I mean, and, and, and he never wrote that next book. Not in, he wrote other books, but he didn't write the next book. Uh, that was an expansion in the sense of his thoughts from Opa, which is a shame because it was, it was uh, stunning. And it, but what really struck me, beyond his genius and, and the, 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 how, how little I understood of the philosophy or knew the philosophy, but I think that was everybody in the audience. There were 300 people in the audience. Everybody realized they didn't really get it, right? He, he was at such a level above everybody else. Uh, well, the other thing was just his command uh, of, of, of the stage, in a sense, command of the audience, command of the material, uh, his, uh, his self-esteem, but also the, the, the benevolence he had towards the audience. I mean, there was some real jokes in the audience, some real, and he would get a little angry with them and, and stuff. But it was always from the, uh, you know, a positive perspective. It was always with kind of a, a, a half smile. It was, uh, you know, the sense of life was just amazing and stunning. And you got that hanging in those conferences. We used to hang out a lot because there was, uh, it was at a, at a, a college campus, 
and um, he was just the nicest guy and, and uh, uh, terrifying and the nicest guy at the same time, right? Because we were terrified because he was the closest we'd gotten to God. Uh, and, uh, and yet he was, he was charming. Uh, actually got a, a Boaz and I, Boaz a lot from Israel, we got a, the two of us actually met with him in his, in his, uh, in his uh, apartment room. Uh, to talk about translating Ayn Rand into Hebrew, and he was like, "Yeah, any essay, any essay translated Hebrew, I don't, I, well, he's, you know, I, I, who cares? Just, just do it. Get, get it, get it out there." And it was, it was fantastic. It was, um, and, and, he, and he was wonderful. But yes, that course really made clear that this was a philosophy, and how much was I, I still had to really study and learn. Yeah, and how I valuable mean, Opal was going to be, and it was, right? Yeah, and I think just to kind of tie both of these together, I think what's amazing is you have somebody who can be deep, abstractly philosophic, and then take the most journalistic issue of the day, which is, hey, 9-11 just happened, what are we doing about it, and what's the cult, how's the culture responding to it? And no matter what he's engaging with, you get this kind of powerful mind that can change, like it can make an amazing impact on somebody's life, and just, you know, that tiny slice of time you're watching them from the chairs and that and that's Leonard's I think great strength is he can take the, the, these ide philosophical ideas and integrate them across every aspect of human life so he's got it, my favorite course of his is the eight great plays right so he does aesthetics um, you know he can do deep philosophy but then he can do current events and it's all integrated so in it in his mind it really is a whole the philosophy is not well here's current events and here's philosophy and here's aesthetics and he, it's all Integrated, and you get that sense from him when he does Q and A's, when he answers questions. That he immediately knows the essence of it, and he immediately integrates it with what's relevant to that audience at that point in time. And that's and sometimes that's it's such just, genius. Sometimes it's just hilarious. He yes. did a love and sex Q and A, which is just it has some of the funniest lines I've ever heard in my life. And I'm including st professional stand-up <laughs> comedians. Yes. But my favorite one, and as a parent now, I really appreciate this. But it, he has a line that amounts to, um, nature made a mistake. Children should have been born from an orgy because two people are not enough to raise a child. 100% true. <laughs> Just captured, you know, indelibly. Yeah, that was, the, the, I can't figure out how old Kira was when he said that. But yes, <laughs> that was, uh, I, I remember, he said it more than once. He, that line he's used more than once. But uh, I, think, I think you know it from the tape that he did at a... Uh, uh, sex and roman uh, romance weekend that I organized must have been 1997 or something like that in at a beautiful resort in Arizona, uh, and that was that was a truly fun event. And yes, he's got he, in that event. He has some great one line. Plus the advice, it's yes. pretty good. Good advice. All right. Well, happy birthday, Leonard. Happy and, birthday, uh, Leonard. I hope everybody checks out his legacy of work. And so, Absolutely. thanks again.